in this second part we'll be blocking the main poses for our run cycle. The first thing to do is to go into the timeline, enable the auto recording, enable the key filter and set it to available so that whenever you will move a bone, Blender will only write the available channels. So you can see here that it has only written keyframes for the available channel, while when I remove it, it writes keyframes for every channel and make our dope sheet and graph editor very messy. Here are the different poses we are going to create. The straight pose just before the character laid on the ground, then the passing pose when both foot are crossing each other, where the weight of the character is pulling him down, then we have the push pose where he gathers energy, the up pose where both foot are in the air, and then again the straight mirror pose. Uh, I've written the passing but that's a mistake, sorry. So I encourage you to uh, make a screen capture of this and keep it in your to be remembered file. So on frame number zero on the side view, I will select the foot bone and I will try to match uh, the picture we have seen. So I'm pulling it uh, toward the front and to rotate the foot, I don't use the foot controller. I always try to use the foot rule because it will be way easier to deal with them during the polishing stage. Believe me, if you have any heel to foot roll uh, controller, try to make as much rotation using this controller instead of rotating the foot. That will save you a lot of time. I've also uh, lowered the main torso controller. Uh, the main torso controller which is here, I won't be rotating it. All the rotation will be made using the hips controller and, and the, the chest controller. Try to keep your main torso controller as clean as possible. If you don't need to rotate it, just don't rotate it. So I'm making uh, all the pose for the time being from the side view. It's uh, way easier to read the silhouette and we can keep the foot straight on the line for the time being. The hips is one of the most important part and also one of the most complicated part to be posed. So the first thing I do is that I want to pull the back leg forward because the hips lead the animation. So I rotate it on the global Z axis so that uh, the hips are pushing forward onto the right leg and then I will uh, move it slightly up to, toward the left leg before there is the contact where the hip will rise even more. Then I will pose the torso. So the torso should be in the opposite direction as the hips. So if the hips are rotated to the left, then the torso should rotate to the right. Another thing that will help you is that the right shoulder will point toward the left foot. So currently the left foot is forward, so the right shoulder should be forward too. And then I'm leaning a bit the character toward the front and also moving um, or translating the torso toward the front to get a more dynamical pose. I want to use IK for both arms, so I will slide the controller here so that both arms are now in IK. I have never used IK for a run cycle, I generally use FK which is more intuitive because you move the arm and then it's about creating a follow through animation for the other part of the limb, so it's pretty natural. But the problem is that I want to get a bouncy effect on the shoulder and I don't want the end to move, so the IK should be the best here. Uh, before I do so, I will just close the end, trying to get a nice fist shape. So using those main controller, you can give the main orientation to the fingers, and by scaling it, you can rotate all the different parts of the finger. Then don't forget to give some rolls using the palm controller. 
then select the bones, Ctrl C, Ctrl Shift V to mirror the pose. Thanks to this editing effect, you won't see me uh, doing some uh, crappy stuff because I just mistaken both sides. So it's the right fist that should be uh, moved forward. Uh, I'm just trying to reach uh, a readable pose for the time being. Uh, then the other arm should be pulled back. So I just move and rotate the hand, the arm follow, and then you can use this small sphere uh, that is the pole target that will give the elbow the correct orientation. The left arm should be posed backward, so I will move it backward, adjust the pull so that I get uh, close to the reference you've captured just before. It's also a moment where I can raise up the left shoulder and lower a bit the right shoulder. The right shoulder should be slightly rotating toward the front while the left shoulder should be rotated toward the back. I will slightly lean the head forward to give more dynamism to my character. Regarding the position of the main torso controller on the x-axis, when you're um, contacting the ground with your foot and you are in the down pose, this is where the torso controller should be uh, moved toward the contact foot. So currently here, uh, this uh, bone should be moved slightly on the right and on next pose, it will be moved uh, even more on the left of the character, sorry, on the right on the screen, but it's on the left for the character. Creating good poses for a run cycle, even after hundreds of run cycle, is pretty complicated. I'm always struggling with how to pose the hips and stuff like this, but I'm not worrying about that because I know that during the splining, during even the next step, I'll be able to correct it. For the time being, it's, it's pretty hard to uh, guess how to pose it. But once it will be moving, you will uh, see immediately what's wrong. So I will now move uh, toward the fourth frame, which is a mistake, uh, because we are using 24 frame, and you should use regular uh, free frame uh, poses, but I've made the mistake and I will correct it later on. So if you don't want to have to correct it, just go to the frame number 3 and start shaping the next pose. So what you should do once you have shaped your character onto uh, the next frame, just select every bone, press I to insert a keyframe for everything, so that uh, the whole pose is like uh, written. So, at this stage, when your foot touch the ground, um, you have to imagine that all your weight is going onto this foot, so your hip will rise uh, on the side, for sure. So this is a complicated part of the hips, because it's both um, lead the animation, meaning this is the part that will pull uh, the foot, but it's also pushed by the reaction to the ground. So that's why I think the hips are pretty hard to be correctly posed. The main torso controller should have its uh, most extreme left position here. Then I will start moving the end to get to this transition where the left end is moving forward. So the shoulder should be pulling it and the right hand will go backward. Also, the chest will be rotated uh, toward uh, the right foot. So slowly I will rotate uh, this part of the character the other way. Once I feel like I have a decent pose for the contact or passing pose, uh, I will select every bone and insert a keyframe so that uh, every bone has a keyframe and the position is kind of locked. This is to avoid weird interpolation from pose to pose on non keyed uh, controller. For example, if the head was not moving from uh, key 0 to key 3, but was moving from 0 to 6, then on the key number 3 you will have an interpolation while you didn't want it to move. So it's not the case, but 
just keep this as an habit, just write every keys, then it's easy to remove the key. So I will now jump to key number 8, you should move to key number 6, don't forget that I've made a mistake, but it doesn't really matter, and I will start to create the pushing pose. So there are uh, some issues on what I'm doing, and this is Luciano that uh, give me this trick, is that uh, on the straight pose and on this pushing pose, um, the leg on the ground, if you want the good result, should be as straight as possible. So the main problem here is that uh, on my wall animation, the main torso controller was a bit too low. But I was able to correct it later on very easily using the graph editor, so don't worry. But in uh, as you are creating your main pose, just think that this part should be straight. So as the character rises, I will uh, pull back the torso. I will also move the main controller here on the left, on the right of the character, sorry, on the left from the front view. And uh, I will just go home, rotate the chest a bit, slightly um, bend it to the left of the character. I will move uh, the fist backward and give a better position to the elbow, moving the pole target. And if you're ever wondering, yes, I'm struggling finding a good pose, so sometimes I just go through the different poses to see if the transition or I mean the movement I read seems to be okay. During the blocking stage I've also forgotten to move the hips on their local uh, x-axis meaning uh, rotating them but I rotate them during the spine so currently when the front leg is forward uh, the hips should be pointing forward, meaning that you will rotate uh, the butt forward and when the leg is pulling back, when it's gathering energy, then uh, the hips and the butt should raise toward the back if you want to pose them right now or you can do as I did and during the polishing stage uh, correct this. So here I have a little problem with the pole, I will just move it uh, forward to avoid this. And as you can see, I'm still making sure that when I rotate the foot, I'm using the foot roll controller, not rotating the foot controller in itself. Once I feel like I have a decent up pose, I will select every bone, press Ctrl C to copy the very first pose. So first story, go onto the very first frame, frame select every bone, Ctrl C, then go onto uh, the next frame, which was 15 for me, and this was a mistake, it should be the frame 12 for you, and Ctrl Shift V to mirror the pose. Then I will go to the second pose, select every bone, Ctrl C, then Ctrl Shift V, as you can see. Third pose, select every bone and repeat the process. So I felt like uh, I had a problem and this is because, uh, as I told you uh, before, my uh, frames were not on the correct ones, I should have an offset of three keys, not four. So now by alt right clicking onto a keyframe, it will select all the keyframes that are aligned on uh, the timeline. So I move them to have a, a three uh, frames offset and I will just control C, control shift V the different pose until I'll reach at the frame number 24 which will be exactly the same pose as the very first one. So this time I just control C, control V, the pose, or you can select all the keyframe and shift D and move them to the right. And now you can see our character uh, running.
with this raw animation going on it's easier to correct some of the poses like the hips and stuff like that so don't worry if it's not perfect mine is uh, far from being perfect yet but during the splining stage we'll be able to tweak all the position and there are some um, bones that I will totally rework during the splining stage so there is only one step remaining to finish this second part but before I'd like to ask you to post your progress in the Twitter thread let's say so I will uh, put the link in the description of the video and feel free to retweet it and to post your progress onto the animation. This will be a good way for me to give you feedback. Now select all your key, press the T key, set it to busy interpolation, then the V key and auto clamped so that the interpolation will be smoothed out. And we have a decent run cycle. Set uh, the the end frame to 23 so that last and first frame are not repeated and now we need to get into splining to make this beginner run cycle way better <laughs> 